Wolverine. Cobra City's Mega Monsters are unstoppable. The Mega Monsters attack with crushing tentacles and gruesome gut bombs. But G.I. Joe Mega Marines come equipped with pressure molded bio armor. Hey, hey, welcome to Half the Battle. May was a very busy month, so for this week I'm gonna take it nice and easy with a short list where I get to make fun of Hasbro. Something that always hits the spot for me. So we'll look at the top 7 dumbest accessories Hasbro ever packed in with a G.I. Joe figure. But first, an honorable mention. Neon weapon trees. And by extension, all weapon trees. These are not exactly dumb, but they are very very lazy and unoriginal. And the neon ones make my eyes bleed. The only reason they're not on the list proper is because the black ones, and the white ones for arctic figures, at least give you some extra weapons for your figures. And now on to the list proper. Number 7. Zap's Bazooka. Now, this accessory would be pretty damn great, especially for 1982, but it has one glaring flaw. It'll break your figure! To be specific, trying to put it in the figure's hand will break the thumb off. Yeah, the handle was not suited for a figure's hands. And sure, they changed the bazooka to make it less damaging, but it's still a danger and I wouldn't put any of them in the hands of the original figures. Still, it looks cool and you can use them with modern figures because they have more bendable thumbs. So they're lowest on the list. Number 6. Play-Doh. They made Play-Doh an accessory. Yes, Mega Marines figures came with a mold you could put over them to make Play-Doh armor. Uh, sorry, moldable bio-armor, I mean. God, that looked stupid. The only reason it's so low on the list is because it's at least fun for younger kids, and we always need to remember these toys were made for children. Still, the neon colors didn't help. And speaking of dumb gimmicks... Number 5. Sonic Backpacks. Look, the idea of adding sound effects to G.I. Joe toys isn't a bad one, it's fun for kids and, hell, even adults. But the way it was implemented was ridiculous! Because the backpacks were absolutely giant, like hernia-inducing backpacks that a figure couldn't even stand up straight with without a figure stand. I've talked about the Sonic Fighters before, even mentioning the need for a figure stand, but I don't think I've ever pointed out that Hasbro didn't even have the common decency to include a stand with the figures that they so clearly needed. Anyway, the problem was that miniaturization technology just wasn't advanced enough at the time for what Hasbro wanted to do here. Sure, even back in the mid-80s you had Christmas cards that could play a tune if you opened them, and that tech was small enough you could fit it in a regular sized backpack, but Hasbro wanted four distinct sound effects with four separate buttons, leading to these monstrosities. And let's not even get into the talking battle commanders where they decided what was really needed were the backpacks attached to the figure with screws, so getting rid of them was a fun adventure. Number 4. Nemesis Enforcer's Wings Nemesis Enforcer got done dirty by the toy line. Not as dirty as Pythona, whose figure from the original line can be seen here, but still. He was hella intimidating in the movie, with large, powerful wings that stretched out and looked majestic. The toys version were the size of a postage stamp and looked about as intimidating as me next to Dave Bautista. So yeah, pretty big fail. Do people still say fail? Number 3. A Space Catapult this accessory originally came with the incinerators, where it sort of made sense, a catapult that launched fireballs. It made far less sense when they gave it to Effects, a Star Brigade figure that's meant to operate in space. The problem from a physics standpoint is obvious. This type of catapult relies on gravity to fire a projectile in an arc, after which it will come down, hopefully on its target. You know what outer space is somewhat lacking? Gravity! So the thing wouldn't work properly. I will however freely admit it's still fun for kids, and this is by far my most nitpicky entry on the list. And speaking of space... Number 2. Duke's Space Helmet. Okay, this one even kids would call out for being dumb. The most important function of a space helmet, its raison d'etre if you will, is that it should protect your head from the vacuum of space. 9 out of 10 astronauts agree. The 10th was this guy. Now, if you take a very close look at Duke's helmet, you just might be able to spot a fundamental design flaw. 
The bloody thing leaves part of his head exposed. This is like making a bear repellent spray out of concentrated honey. It does the opposite of what it's supposed to achieve. Oh, and it's also so high on the list because it looks a bit silly, like an upside-down fishbowl. And the number one dumbest accessory is... Rocket Launcher Helmets, from 1993 Mace and Muskrat. These are rocket launchers attached to helmets. Once again, the fundamental design flaw should be obvious. Unless you're the Hulk, this would end badly for you. Though, I have to admit, having your soldiers tear their own heads off to intimidate the enemy is a bold strategy. Not one you'd get many volunteers for, but bold. It fails on so many levels. As a weapon, it could kill you, the user. As a piece of protective gear, it has an explosive right there on top of it for the enemy to shoot at. And since this is hell, one of them has to be neon colored, of course. Whoever designed this was an idiot or a mad genius. And that was the list. I did consider putting the eel's robotic missile firing shark on here, but I found it was just a little too awesome for that. If you know of any others that should have been on the list, do let me know in the comment section below. Well, I'll see you next time, everybody. And hey, why not like, share, and subscribe if that's your thing? Mega Marines! Cobra City's Mega Monsters are unstoppable! The Mega Monsters attack with crushing tentacles and gruesome gut bombs! But G.I. Joe Mega Marines come equipped with pressure molded bio armor! Yeah, this is gonna be a short video because I needed time to relax and recuperate after main character May. So, there's a little extra on the latest toy that I bought for myself. It's Huffer! It's Kingdom Huffer, from the newest or second to newest Transformers toy line. I never had a Huffer, and this one looks incredible. Anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the show.